Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerplate.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how mind mapping can be used to conduct short, sharp, and highly effective project retrospectives using the all new MindMeister. Using just a basic MindMeister template, we can give ourselves and our team a simple set of prompts for their thinking and feedback, and then use the structure of the map and some additional MindMeister functionality to really ensure the most important things are made visible. One simple mind map can be used in multiple situations to capture the key lessons and actions that you want to take forward. We simply ask ourselves to brainstorm and think about the positives, negatives, and next time. We'll look at each of these sections in a moment, but before we go there, let's start at the top of the map where we've got an overview branch to remind ourselves of key project information such as objectives, key people, and any documents that we might want to refer to. We can use the icon functionality within MindMeister to highlight how far we've progressed towards project goals like so, or we might use other icons within the software to flag certain items for attention. For example, perhaps a key member of the project team was away sick for much of the project, and so we want to give ourselves a little visual signal in the map as a reminder that this was the case, and we might also use the notes feature in MindMeister to add a little bit of extra detail and context to the map so that somebody else looking at it might understand what that visual signal means, or we might just give ourselves an important reminder of some of the context. When it comes to those project documents that we might want to refer to during our retrospective, we can, using MindMeister, pull these right into the mind maps as attachments on any topic. This means we can then jump directly over to them from the software if we need to. Developing this section of the mind map in advance of the retrospectives is a good idea so that you have everything readily available during the discussion. Now you're ready to start capturing your project feedback in the positives and negatives section of the mind map. Try to resist jumping down here into the next time area for a moment, and instead give yourself or your team proper time to capture ideas and information in these two review sections before trying to identify actions and next steps. If you jump down into the next time stuff too soon, there's a risk that you'll plan without view of all the facts and context that you might need. Instead, we should take plenty of time to review what has just happened so that we can hopefully plan our next time actions from a much more complete view of what we've just experienced. You'll notice that we're keeping these main headings deliberately broad and we don't try and be any more specific than positives or negatives at this stage. We want to ensure that any feedback can be pulled in here and we therefore deliberately avoid using any more specific leading questions or prompts. For your own process, you might use other specific questions or areas that you know you need to build into your template, and that is of course easily done in MindMeister. However, in our business, we've just found it more effective to leave things very broad and open so that the team can contribute anything that comes to mind, whether it's a very tangible thing like phase two delivered late, or something more subjective like a feeling that somebody might want captured, such as I felt rushed or stressed. By leaving things very broad at this headline level, we found we're able to capture a more interesting range and diversity of inputs, which has often been helpful in surfacing less obvious feedback that we might otherwise have missed if we'd asked people to focus in earlier on more specific topics and questions. As you gather group feedback in the mind map, it can be very helpful to think in terms of capturing and categorizing ideas and information. For example, in this more developed view of the same mind map, we have a few different ideas here in the positives area that seem to be relating to our project team. So we can create a topic called project team and then drag the relevant ideas into that topic. Further to this, we can also look at whether we can subcategorize further. For example, breaking down the project team topic into teamwork and communication, and then adding the relevant pieces into that section. By applying regular categorization and subcategorization to our mind map, we can not only pull information into a better visual summary, but we can actually also prompt ourselves to think of things that we may have missed in our initial brainstorm. For example, as soon as we add the communication topic into the mind map, you might be prompted to think about other positives that you observed in terms of the team communication. And then, of course, we can add that into the mind map as well. On the flip side, the categories and subcategories that you build into one section of the mind map will often also prompt you to think about those same categories and whether they are relevant in another section. 
For example, having added communication into our project positives, it's possible that a team member might raise some communication negatives that we should also be capturing in the relevant section of the mind map. As such, the MindMeister map serves to not only capture perspectives, but also prompt perspectives and additional ideas. This is an excellent way for participants to build on each other's ideas and, and spark off each other if you're working in a group setting. So, once we've worked through a process of capturing and categorizing positives and negatives from the recent project, we're now much better prepared to look forward at the ways we can improve future projects using the next time section of our mind map. As you can see, within this section of the mind map, we've been more prescriptive with our prompts, and we're asking our team to think about actions, behaviors, and activities that we might stop, start, do more, do less, or maintain next time we take on a project. While you might be tempted to focus straight away on very specific actions to be taken, we actually find that this section of the mind map using these prompts instead tends to trigger some more comprehensive thinking, and is also really valuable for highlighting some of the softer or harder to measure behavioral things that we want to ensure people remember next time around. For example, we might identify a clear specific stop task of stop using WhatsApp for project chat based on some of the feedback we gathered above as a negative in communication. This is a clear, measurable, unequivocal action. You've either done it or you haven't. However, other things that might be raised might suggest things like a maintain action could be maintain teamwork in adversity based on learning that we did really well in a stressed project. Now this is a bigger, broader behavioral principle that is hard to write into a specific action, but it's still very important to capture and remind ourselves of in future. We therefore find that the stop, start, do more, do less and maintain structure is better suited for capturing the mix of sort of hard, specific actions and maybe higher level, softer behavioral principles when compared with a more narrow action or task list focus. If you take the time to complete this section of the mind map, both with tangible actions and some behavioral principles, it makes for an invaluable resource to revisit when you sit down to do your next kickoff meeting for the next project. To be reminded not only of the practical items like don't use WhatsApp for your essential project communications, but also be reminded of some of those more intangible principles around working together when things get hard can be a great way to focus a team in the early stages of the next project. And of course, that's the point. Make the next project better based on what we learned from the one we've just completed. The process can be as simple as what I've shown you on screen or as complex as you choose to make it. The process I've just shown you could be tackled in a full day review, very comprehensive, but could also be done in a 30 minute Zoom call if needed using the real time collaboration functions of MindMeister to speed things up further. The mind map makes it easy to capture, categorize and explore essential feedback and learning in a coherent structure and all in one place. This, in turn, creates a fantastic summary to help guide you and your team when the next project comes around. To try out MindMeister for yourself, head on over to mindmeister.com. For more resources to help you go further with mind mapping, head on over to biggerplate.com.